Good morning, everybody. I'm Mary Bubala. We will return to the prices right in just a moment, but first we want to update you on some breaking news in the Freddie Gray case. A judge has made a decision as to whether the six officers charged in the case will stand trial here in Baltimore or elsewhere. Judge Barry Williams heard arguments on the change of venue from both sides this morning, and the motion to move the trial out of Baltimore has been denied. Right now, we have live team coverage. Megan McCorkle is following what happened in the courtroom today. Mike Shue is with protesters, but we are going to go right to Megan with the judge's decision. Megan? Well, Mary, as you just said, the judge made that decision just moments ago that the trials will stay here in Baltimore for now. Now, Judge Barry Williams all morning long has heard arguments from defense attorneys who said they did not feel that the six officers charged in the death of Freddie Gray could get a fair trial here in Baltimore. And they cited many things. One of them being the high amount of publicity here in this case. Now, they said that possibly jurors could feel intimidated here in Baltimore and they could have fears of a potential riot if they decided that the case would be a not guilty verdict. That is one of the arguments that defense lawyers made. They also said that jurors could possibly see the officers as poster children for the police problems here in Baltimore. Now, all Attorneys for all six officers argued in front of the judge today. One of the other subjects they brought up, that $6.4 million payout that the city announced for Freddie Gray's family. That announced just this week. They said that that could impact everyone because all of the Baltimore City jury would be taxpayers. Now, prosecutors countered those arguments in front of the judge. They said we should try and pick a jury before we decide that we can't pick a jury for all six trials. They said we should go into the process hoping that we could get a Baltimore City jury. The, the prosecution arguing that defense arguments were actually insulting to the citizenry of Baltimore. And at this point, Judge Barry Williams agreeing with them. He says the trials for now will stay here in Baltimore and that they will try and start picking juries for those trials for the six officers. My colleague Mike Helgren is inside the courtroom right now and we will get details from him as he comes out. But that is the latest from here, Mary. The trials set to stay in Baltimore. Back to you. All right, wrapping up. Megan, thank you. Just an extraordinary task in the days ahead to find these six separate juries for six separate trials. Let's go right to Mike Shu. You have been with the group of protesters this morning. We hear there was one arrest in the crowd, but uh, how are people responding out there right now, Mike? Well, as Megan said just a, a short while ago, a huge uh, cheer went up from the protesters here, and they were chanting, the trial stays here, the trial stays here. Right now, they are talking with uh, a huge collection of media. There really only are about 20 to 40 protesters here today, many more media and onlookers than there were people who were actively engaged. But while we were waiting for uh, this word to come out, they took a couple of laps around these courthouses here, walking about uh, eight blocks. Uh, the distance around uh, getting their message out. The police provided a space for them and allowed them to walk, uh, keeping them on the sidewalk. And then they made a complete and full lap and continued their protest here, right in front of Courthouse East, where, of course, these hearings have been held. Also, showing up at that time was Co Police Commissioner Kevin Davis, who attempted to speak to the protesters and then afterwards spoke with me. You don't see cops out here in riot gear. Uh, you see police officers out here in their uniform of the day. And my message to them at the 7 o'clock roll call this morning is that at moments like this, go talk to somebody. Go have a conversation. Go break the ice. Ask somebody where they're from. Ask somebody what drew them to Baltimore today. So back now live, there are hundreds of police officers here in and around the courthouse area, Department of Public Works blocking off streets just to make sure that everyone uh, is safe and that there is a space set aside for protests because the mayor and the commissioner were clear that peaceful protesting is going to be allowed in this case and they're going to provide a space for it, but it must be peaceful and they're going to stage it in such a way that uh, no one gets hurt. And there were some... Uh, 
comments here that were directed at police regarding uh, racism and, and, and other uh, words were used, very colorful, somewhat incendiary, and the police stood by um, and listened to this. Now, as far as what's going on here, um, we are waiting for the attorneys and those involved in the case to come out and start talking about it. Right now, the protesters are expressing uh, their happiness that the case will stay in Baltimore. So right now, reporting live with a heavy police presence around the courthouse, Mike Shue, WJZ Eyewitness News. Mary, send it back to you on TV Hill. All right, Mike, thanks so much. Certainly today's Come news back. will diffuse some of that anger from protesters. Let's go back to Megan McCorkle with more on the judge's decision. Megan, this judge is no nonsense. Judge Barry Williams does not take a long time to make these critical decisions. You know, Mary is certainly very decisive, and he has had sort of a pattern last week. During last week's hearing, he would do the same thing. He would offer the arguments. He would tell the attorneys that they had a set amount of time to argue. He would take about a 15-minute recess, and he would come back with his decision, and that is exactly what he did. We hear that all of the attorneys for the six officers involved had about 10 or 15 minutes in front of the judge. He took about a 15-minute recess and decided that the trials would stay here in Baltimore. Now, the defense attorneys, all for six officers, made those arguments. It was varying arguments. They cited the $6.4 million payout to Freddie Gray's family, saying that could impact all of the taxpayers here in Baltimore, especially the people that would be sitting on the jury. He also, the defense attorneys also talking about the intense publicity in this case. It has made national headlines. It has certainly made a lot of headlines here in Baltimore. They tried to argue that their clients could not get a fair trial here in Baltimore. Now, prosecutors countered that argument, saying it is an insult to the city of Baltimore to say that they can't seat a jury of 12 impartial people for each of those trials. So at this point, they will go to jury selection. Now, they can opt at that point if they think they can't find a jury. The venue could still be changed for some of these trials, but Judge Barry Williams says let's at least try and seat juries in this case before we make that decision of moving the trials out of Baltimore City. So as for right now, we are waiting on the trial dates for those six officers and when they will when they will start. My colleague Mike Helgren was inside the courtroom. We're waiting to get information from him on exactly what the judge talked about, exactly what he said to those attorneys, because there was not, like you said, not a ton of time for those arguments. It lasted through the morning, and honestly, we thought that this could last throughout the day, these arguments, but at this point, it looks like the judge has made his decision. The juries, they will try and seat the juries here. Um, we have seen pro uh, protesters, as Mike Shue mentioned, throughout the area. There was a big cheer that went up. They're a little bit down the street from me. A big cheer went up when they discovered that the trials would stay here in Baltimore. You can see my attorney, or my uh, colleague, Mike Helgren, attempting to cross the street to get us a little bit more information on what what the what the judge said but as you mentioned Mary this judge has been very decisive we had talked to legal analysts that were looking through some of the uh, trials some of the statements that he made during last pre uh, motions hearing and they said it really did look like he was going to try and keep it here in the city of Baltimore that he kept saying that the Baltimore City Court system is prepared that they are ready to handle this and so that is looking like what it's going to be at this point and Megan, still waiting on Mike some of those details just, and Mike is just mm -hmm. uh, next to you we'll give him a second to get mic'd up there's also an option I know we talked to I a know, legal a legal analyst who said these officers will also have the ability to just ask for a judge to decide their case. So it looks like there's still some options for these officers um, when their uh, jury selection starts, whether they can get uh, a jury that is unbiased and, and can hear the case. And if they can't, maybe change a venue or they can just have a judge decide the case. So still to be determined uh, what will happen in each individual case. Mike Helgren is with you now. Um, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll hear from him about what happened yeah. in court today. Well, basically, the judge said that jurors in Baltimore City are not monolithic, that they can make their own decisions about this. And he said, yes, there have been statements made by former Commissioner Batts, by the mayor, the settlement agreement that happened yesterday that could have an impact. But he says that he feels that there are enough 
jurors that can make up their own minds and have a fair and impartial decision in this case. And I want to bring in uh, Professor Doug Colbert. Uh, you were in the courtroom. Yes, I you was. You heard these arguments. What did you think of the defense argument? Well, I, it was a good argument, but it was short of the law that's needed to support the argument. And it's a very heavy burden. I mean, it's not just a feeling that the defendant has that they can't get a fair trial. You really have to show the kind of pervasive publicity and prejudice and hostility against the accused that requires such a drastic move as a transfer outside of the place where the crime allegedly occurred. And the judge seemed to uh, be tough on both sides in his questioning, as you heard in the courtroom, uh, and he said he reviewed, uh, I mean, a voluminous amount of, of documents. What do you think about him, his decision making here? Well, the judge is what lawyers want, very well prepared, very capable of asking the hard questions. And he makes sure that the lawyers are going to be uh, ready to argue a case in court. I, I think this judge is doing a fine job. Thank you very much, Professor Colbert. Uh, again, big arguments on both sides today. You heard uh, from the defense that uh, that some statements that Ms. Mosby had made when she went out on the war memorial prejudiced the jury pool. They also argue that people would be scared uh, if they found these officers not guilty, that their houses could burn, that there could be unrest in the city. Uh, the judge basically said, well, we're going to question them in voir dire when we get the panel uh, of jurors and we're going to see if we can seat an impartial jury. And, you know, if there are problems then, we can revisit the issue. But for now, he said he is confident that there can be an impartial jury found here in Baltimore. And prosecutors had called some of the defense arguments insulting to the citizenry. Mary? All right, Mike, thank you for all this information on this Freddie Gray breaking news. And thank you to Megan McCorkle and the professor as well. The Freddie Gray case takes a big step forward. All six officers will have their trials here in Baltimore. Stay with WJZ for complete coverage of today's Freddie Gray hearing and decision. We will bring you the latest on today's decision. Stay with us. More at noon today.